Okay, we're, uh, you know, we've been showing you all some of the bad stuff, such as me going through and picking out some dead fish. Uh, so we thought, Carl thought it might be a good idea to do something, Carl's behind the camera, uh, to do something uh, a little bit more glamorous, show you the, the uh, glamorous side of the fish keeping business. So I'm going to be cleaning some pumps. Now I did greenhouse two pumps this morning because I noticed the water flow was low and uh, it was time to, to clean them and the first thing I noticed is that they were there's very little water flowing through them because they were slimed up. I looked at it and the slime was uh, basically nitrosomous colonies, bacterial colonies taking advantage of what little water flow was coming through to extract uh, ammonia from the system and I hate getting rid of them but we uh, really need water flowing so I, and I did clean them out and we're going to see whether the same thing happened in greenhouse one where, where we are right now and of course yeah you know, i try to multitask so i'm working on uh removing dead fish as i go down to to the pumps so you'll have to forgive me a bit uh, i'm almost there just about Okay, I'm going to go out after I pick up a couple more fish and turn off a pump and clean it. Right. Stormy, one of our employees is in Greenhouse 2 taking dead fish out of the sumps. It's a little bit hard. What we have here is the floor gutter water runs into the vats, overflows, runs down the floor gutter into the sumps where we have these pumps pick it up. This pump pumps about, oh, it's rated at about 67 gallons an hour. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six of them running this greenhouse. Uh, but they have, they're above ground, which is kind of annoying. I can't find good submersible pumps. Uh, we have the intake uh, in the, the sump, which is four feet deep, have a cage, an aquaculture uh, netting cage around the intakes to, uh, to, so we don't suck fish up into it. And then these baskets uh, filter out anything that might be damaging to the pump. And that's what I'm going to open up in a second. I wonder what happened to my brick that I used to open this. Hmm. Okay. I guess it probably got kicked off into the the sump. I'm not going to go sump diving. I'm going to try to figure out how to do this. I know I've got something over here I can get. This is a specially designed hammer uh, to uh, open up these uh, filter cases. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is reach up here and unplug this pump, turn the power off. Uh, this valve uh, controls water from the pump into the, the four inch manifold there and then out each of the lines. Uh, but I'm just going to let water run through. Oh yeah, it's slimed. Not as bad as the other greenhouse. But that slime, which is uh, doing a good job of preventing uh, water from running through the pump, choking it back quite a bit. Uh, so we're going to take this out and clean it and get that pump running again. Okay, Maya. The, the, normally we do the we clean these filters every, I usually try to do them every Saturday. 
things been kind of disrupted uh, just a little bit so it's been over certainly over a week probably uh, a week and a half since they've been cleaned uh, let me turn on the water out here by the way we just ran on a uh, an ammonia test and we've gone down from uh, one part per million which is fairly toxic fortunately the water temperatures are low so that helps but our pH is about 8.5 which makes ammonia even more toxic uh, but we aren't losing any currently losing any any fish everybody that's dead has been dead a few days so it's probably temperature related but the uh, uh, the test just showed that we're down to about 0.25 parts per million, which is considered the, no the threshold beyond which you don't want to go. So we're, we're headed the right direction, uh, and the, which means our plants are catching up. They, uh, they got hurt by the cold weather too. They don't photosynthesize as much, uh, so they don't use as much ammonia uh, uh, to build proteins when uh, which is a nitrogen source for them uh, when they're not photosynthesizing as much plus the fact that we had a, almost two weeks of completely cloudy weather so that they were not photosynthesizing much for that and then in greenhouse one we had a carbon monoxide problem because we were having to use heaters that, that weren't rated for uh, indoor use and we would uh, I'd come out several times in the night and if the carbon monoxide alarm was going off I would turn the heater off and and aerate and you know open the door a little bit to exchange some air wait a half an hour to an hour later come back out which is a lot of fun in 12 and 13 degree weather with wind uh, and it's it's about a hundred and fifty yard uh, hike from the house to here uh, so I, I try to get a few minutes sleep come back out turn the heaters on and it's just a matter of balancing out carbon monoxide and heat uh, we kind of lost out on the heat end uh, water temperatures dropped to 55 and below 55 Fahrenheit and below and that's why we have so many dead fish okay I'm going just using pressure to rinse this filter and then we'll reinstall it and all that slimy stuff is just bacterial colonies they're really happy with the uh, uh, um, ammonia being available uh, but they they actually are helping too and we have a huge amount of surface area in the greenhouses because we have the floor gutter which is almost 3,000 square feet we have all the vat sides with uh, water running down trickling which is perfect for uh, uh, nitrosomas and nitrobacter all the all the bacteria that are uh, involved in removing nitrogen ammonia and, and nitrites and nitrates from the, the system uh, the you can tell it's working because if it weren't our water wouldn't be clear and if you look in the vats the water is clear it would be pea soup green from the algae taking advantage of the nitrogen so the the uh, plant filters and the all the sur the bacterial colonies and all the surfaces are are keeping ammonia levels n nitrogen levels low enough that the uh, single cell uh, floating algae can't can't grow uh, if I took uh, one of the vats offline and left it in sunlight for a couple days it would uh, turn bright green in fact I have a an article on TFH about our plant filtration system and I showed three jars uh, one from the system which is crystal clear uh, one from a vat that's been cut off for a few days and is green and then one from a goldfish vat where we grow green water goldfish are really good at growing green water and it, it you can't see through it uh, but if you look at the water it's clear I'm uh, not fighting duckweed at this point because duckweed also is a really good uh, plant for pulling nitrogen out so I'm letting it grow. I'll pay the price for that later. Uh, but things are off. Okay, I'm going to uh, set this back up. Stormy, catch. You flubbed that. 
<laughs> uh, okay, uh, Stormy's complaining about me getting fish on her work shirt, which probably has worse stuff on it by now, since she's been pulling dead fish out of the sump. Oh, there's a nice uh, peacock alive. Okay, so now, oh, by the way, uh, there's a dead Ancestress. I'm afraid that we lost 100% of Ancestress. Uh, I haven't seen any live ones. The other thing I think we lost everything of uh, is convicts, and probably not a great monetary loss, but I've been working for a long time on developing a solid orange-pink convict female, and on the blacks, been working on uh, uh, females that are red, blue, and green uh, mostly, and that's all gone, I th I'm afraid. Okay, to put this back on, Oh, by the way, this is our super duper um, uh, pump platform. It's a uh, from uh, not tractor supply, but uh, Harbor, uh, Freight. Harbor Freight. These are ramps, and they work really well, better than wood, which falls apart. And we still have wooden ones in two. I um, have the ramps to replace them. Would have gotten it done, except for things happen. You can see some of the dead fish that are still floating in the sump that we're going to be getting out later today. We were going to start today on inventorying our breeder, 300 gallon breeder vats to see just how bad things are, but it looks like we have too many other things to do. Okay, what we should see as this fills up, I guess enough water was thrown. Uh, usually we see bubbles coming up at the end of the uh, from the intake, but it looks like it's already full of water, so now it's ready to plug in. If I can find where I hid the plug. Okay, it's running. You can see the, uh, the bubbles at the top, which will eventually clear out, and that's now pumping uh, somewhere between six and thousand, uh, 7,000 gallons of water an hour into the uh, into the pipes. Okay, so now I'm going to do this one since I'm right here. Get the right plug. Oh, there are a bunch of big cichlids dead back there. We'll have to net out in a few minutes. This aretum is in my way. I think I'm going to have to have storm. See, this one's not as bad as two. And two, the water, by the time I got out to, uh, to clean it, the water was still draining out of the, uh, of the cage. Let's see if I can fix this thing so that I don't trip over it. By the way, uh, we just discovered that our YouTube channel, oh, he's still alive. He has a bad eye. I'm going to put him in a 300. I don't think he's going to make it, but we'll see. Uh, that's one of the babies from Harvey. Uh, when we, we had to take the covers off the greenhouses during Harvey, and we got 14 inches of uh, rain in here, and the Lacostomus, the big ones, about that big, and the uh, sumps went crazy spawning. And so we have a whole bunch of uh, uh, Lacostomus, Hypostomus, Lacostomus that size. Uh, there are, we try to keep two big Lacostomus in each 300 for uh, snail and uh, algae control. Okay, we'll rinse this one off. Yeah, I told you this was the glamorous part. I'm sure every one of you would like to come and do the clean these pumps for me. It's a little bit more hazardous in greenhouse too, where we have old wooden walk, uh, wooden platforms that 
I'm the only one that knows how to step on them without having them fall in with a, with a couple pumps <laughs> running as well. I seem to have a fire ant on me. The fire ants took, handled the uh, hard freezes just fine. Uh, that Maya eating another fish. <laughs> uh, this is a big uh, royal blue dolphin. You can't tell that he was blue. Uh, okay, go down here and get the next one. Uh, temperature is really climbing in the greenhouse. I don't want it to climb too much, but I don't have a, a uh, my, I can't really use my normal cooling methods, uh, which is opening up the at the top of the uh, greenhouses and, bl and blowing air in to force out hot air because I want I don't want it. I, I, I can't do that because at nighttime low temperatures. So again, we just balance things out. Okay, what did I do with the? Here's the top. Okay, you can see the, maybe you can see the water, the air bubbling up. That's clearing that pipe. I let it do that just so that it, uh, the pump primes. See that it's slowing down a lot so it's ready to turn on. The fire ants like these plants, so when I reach in here to plug things in, sometimes some of them crawl on me and they're really annoying me right now. Okay, so those two are clean. Next I'll do that one, and then I've got uh, three more over there. Y'all have probably seen enough of the glamorous side of, of the uh, operation. If we get a chance later on today, we might start going through uh, some of the breeder bats to uh, start assessing what our inventories are, see what we lost. Uh, it looks pretty grim. I think easily we've lost 90% of our fish. Uh, I'm not quite sure yet whether youngsters thrive better than the, the adults. The saddest thing was we lost my red OB peacock breeder male. It's a project I've been working on for well over a decade and he died. And I, I had just set him up with 50 of his daughters uh, to try to concentrate the, the genes. Uh, I guess I could go buy Red OB, but it seemed I've always liked to develop from our own fish through selection. And we've developed all of our uh, OB peacocks from uh, one box of fish we got, I think from either 5D or Equil in 2003. And uh, we about 300 of them, we grew them up, and I selected, this one looks like a gold OB, this one looks like an orange, this one looks like a sky blue, and I started selecting, I figured out what color females to use with each male to, to maximize the, uh, the uh, production of, of that particular strain. So, we'll see what happens the, uh, after we do our inventory. It's gonna take a while, but we should get a feel certainly by tomorrow, of what percentage of our breeders have survived. Good fish keeping.